It is early December, 1894. Emperor Menelik II of the young Ethiopian Empire is enjoying the solitude of his palace in the city of Addis Ababa. Suddenly, he hears a knock on his door. It is Ras Alula Ngira and Ras Mengesh Johan. They have come to beg for forgiveness. Recently, the two lords had worked alongside Baratieri, the Italian colonial general and governor of Italian Eritrea, in an attempt to overthrow Menelik. Menelik responded by offering Johan a deal. He offered to make Johan the king of the province Tigray, but this was under the condition that Johan would swear his loyalty to Menelik, as well as assist Menelik in ousting the Italians from the region. Keep in mind, the Italians did not recognize Ethiopian independence, and it was clear that they sought to encroach upon Ethiopian sovereignty. One of the lords under Menelik's allegiance attempted an uprising against Baratieri in the city of Halai, but unfortunately, it was unsuccessful. Baratieri took this as a sign that war with Ethiopia was inevitable, so quickly he gathered an army of his own and marched down to Edwa. Johan, with an army of his own, eager to fulfill his promise to Menelik, had began his march north against Baratieri for himself. At this point, Baratieri had realized that his line of supply and flank is exposed in between him and Eritrea, so he retreated. Baratieri had successfully predicted the route that Johan was taking in order to attack him, so he fortified his army along that route. And once he came in contact with the advancing Ethiopians, he had quickly defeated Johan's army at the Battle of Coatid. Johan had to swiftly retreat back into Ethiopia. Eleven months passed by where there was little to no fighting. But importantly, Baratieri entered Ethiopia again and occupied the city of Mekele. He then proceeded to position the rest of his army in the mountains just south. Ras Makonen Wald Mikal was likely feeling at this point that the Italian invasion was too close for his comfort. He owned land just south of Tigray, dangerously close to the encroaching Italians. With their armies and each other's support, the two lords joined in arms and marched north with their armies once again against Baratieri. They caught Baratieri's army in the mountain of Ambigali and forced a decisive battle where they came out victorious. After Baratieri retreated in defeat, the two lords quickly advanced north towards Mekele. The new year began with Makonen surrounding the city of Mekele, cutting off the Italian troops inside from food, water, and supplies. Makonen launched several assaults on the fortress in Mekele, all of which had been unsuccessful. But the battle was won when the Italian garrison surrendered on the 21st. Baratieri received millions in funding from the government, as well as several new divisions under the command of Matteo Francesco Alberton, Vittoria D'Abromida, and Giuseppe Aramondi. Meanwhile, Menelik was bolstering an army of his own, placing troops under the command of his wife, Empress Taitu Betul, and also calling upon Ras Mikal of Wallo with his infamous cavalry. The newly raised beast of an Ethiopian army began advancing north. With pressure from his subordinates and the Italian Prime Minister, Baratieri began advancing south at roughly the same time. Johan and Makonen joined the rest of the larger Ethiopian army, and the two armies met at a battle in Edwa.
Medalik's morning prayers were interrupted by a message from one of Alula Ingida's spies. He had news. The Italians were on their way. The Emperor spent the morning organizing his army for battle. Ras Alula Ingida was ordered to hold the south with his half a dozen thousand line infantrymen armed with rifles and also with 42 Russian-made cannons. In the north, Ras Makonen and Ras Mangesh Johan had tens of thousands of riflemen under their command along with several artillery pieces, bolstered by Mikhail's famous Wallow Cavalry. Under the command of Menelik and his wife was a reserve force of more of the same, but with an additional 20,000 spearmen. The battle started with Albertone advancing directly into Ras Alula's position at 6 a.m. Favorable high grounds and support from his artillery, Alula decided to press the attack. The lines exchanged volleys of fire for two hours until Albertone was captured. Now with their commander as a prisoner of war, the Italians started to fall back. Gabermita marched southward to assist Albertone, but was cut off by Johan and Mengesh. What was left of Albertone's men attempted to retreat and regroup with Aramondi. The Italian defense caused Alula's advance to stall. To break the Italian lines, Menelik ordered a mass charge from his spearmen. Discipline had shattered across the Italian ranks, causing a mass rout. Aramondi did not survive the assault. Meanwhile, Johan and Mengesh were successfully pushing back Dabermida's men. After the Italians had retreated into a narrow valley, Mikhail ordered a mass cavalry and infantry charge. The charge broke the Italian division and killed Dabermida in the process. At this time, Baratieri's own division had arrived, but it was far too late. He occupied the heights of Mount Bella in a defensive position before being outflanked by Johan and Mengesh's troops. All the while, Menelik himself watched from a nearby mountain.
The surviving Italians and Berrettieri fled the field. As a result of the climactic battle, 3,888 Ethiopian soldiers were dead, 6,000 were wounded, and in total, 9,888 troops were lost. Meanwhile, for the Italians, 3,643 lie dead, 1,681 were captured as prisoners of war, who were then later repatriated at the end of the conflict. In total, Italy lost 5,324 troops that day. The general, Baratieri, was considered so incompetent by the Italian Prime Minister for his loss to an African nation that he was stripped of his office and fired. Sometime later, the Italian government decided to make peace with Ethiopia, effectively losing the war. Today, the anniversary of this battle is a public holiday in Ethiopia, and it is celebrated across the world as an outstanding defense against imperialism. Across the world, the Battle of Edwa marks Ethiopian patriotic identity and pride for those of African descent globally.